computer right there. Okay, okay, every everybody. Um, welcome to the um, how to fail at making money on YouTube webinar. Um, I've started broadcasting live and recording just because this is a funny comic relief opening as Katerina and um, Paul are trying to figure out how to sit next to each other and still have the camera like show properly. Exactly. So, of course, you know, you already know who I am. Um, as far as the viewing audience here, um, Desiree, say hi or something. Hi. That's Desiree. Chris, Kristen. Okay. Kristen. Yeah. Are you there, Kristen? Hi. And there you are. Hello. Hello. There we go. I'm there. And there's right here. there there's Hi. Katerina and Paul, and it it seems that they figured something out. <laughs> hey. This is more long-term sustainable. Katarina's <laughs> knees. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good thing this is Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy. It's a real good thing. Maybe we could sit next to each other on the couch now. If we have it further away. Yes. Rather than me crushing your lap. Yeah. Sorry, guys. It's okay. We're really trying to figure this out. <laughs> That's fine. It's it's like always at the beginning of these sorts of things. There's always the sorting out of the technical difficulties and nuances and. Now our faces are obscured the, by darkness. Oh, did we lose Kristen for a second there? Um, Only 21 minutes to get everybody in the same room. I mean, we're doing pretty good. <laughs> 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 um, Kristen seems to have like dropped out for a second there. Um, I'm just gonna message her on Facebook. I'll be right back. Where did you go? Well, Paul. Now that everyone's gone. Yeah, we're not <laughs> recording this or anything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. Hey, everybody. <laughs> uh, I'd say get a room, but we're already in one. Right. <laughs> Chat room. Dave in it. Chat room. There we go. It's a it's a party room. It's just a party one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And once everybody kind of situates here, we'll actually go into the topic. <laughs> In the meantime, everybody, everybody get, gets to watch um, Katarina and Paul suck face. <laughs> I think we're aliens or something. Lava under your face. Sound of dishes. That's the and most. Important. Kristen said it um, disconnected, and I, I said, well, rejoin. <laughs> So hopefully she'll be right back. We're in the picture is of where Death Ray used to be. Yeah. Is Mercury in retrograde or something? And maybe we're getting like you know <laughs> shit piled with like solar flares or something, or I don't know. Okay. It, it looks like Kristen has returned. Yes. So she'll just have to trying to connect. Re-enable her video again. She's she's on a, a smartphone, so it's not quite as simple of a process as being on a computer. I guess things are a bit more difficult with uh, Google Hangouts on a smartphone, or maybe it's a not so smartphone. <laughs> it's that she's trying to do it on a Nokia brick. A little bit. There she is. And Desiree will be right back in a moment. She went to go do something or another right quick. Yeah. 
After these messages, she'll be right back. <laughs> Please hold for the next available Desiree. Hey, who knows? Maybe Jay or Mike or Rochelle or one of the others will just like synchronistically pop in all of a sudden. I mean, I, I mean, I, I wasn't really expecting everybody to like you know join at the exact same time. Everybody's kind of got their own schedules and things they're doing. So I know people are going to be coming in at different times. Can we just get started, or are we waiting for Desiree? Yes, for the moment we are waiting for Desiree. Okay, because Paul and I can't kind of necessarily here. be here all night. We're at a church camp um, ah. using their Wi-Fi. Yeah, we're totally vamping Wi-Fi off a of church camp. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Costa Rica, amigos. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's okay. Any anything anybody misses, whether they are here now and leave in a little bit, or they're not here now and they come later, all this is going to be recorded, so you know people can feel free to catch up. And Yay. it looks like everybody's here now. Desiree's Yay. here. Welcome back. Everybody Yay. seems to be here. <laughs> okay, so I am going to shift into screen share mode. Okay, start screen share, and I'm going to shift back to where I was here. Um, the text may or not may not be difficult to read, so I'm going to read it. Keys to success and failure on YouTube, and of course, I have a little example screen there and, and showing, you know, one of my more successful months. You know, so you could see that it's it's showing that I made quite a bit of money, and it's showing the little statistics and everything. Um, anyway, anyone can do this. The basic method runs opposed to everything you've been taught by society. So it might cause you some cognitive dissonance, but here it is anyways. Key number one, make having fun your priority. I promise you will fail epic if you don't. Key number two, you will only make money if you don't make it about the money. Refer to number one. Key number three, it won't rain money. Honor your pace. It will take what it takes. Enjoy the time it takes as a fun adventure. Do not look at the passage of time as somehow having failed just because the universe does not jive with your impatient and unrealistic expectations. Key number four, be authentic. Don't be afraid to be yourself and express yourself. Don't try to live up to your idea of someone else's expectations. Be yourself or you will fail. Key number five, don't be so serious. Take insults as compliments as there is an, there is an asshole or easily offended insecure moron around every corner just waiting to talk shit. There's no such thing as bad advertising. Trolls are going to be one of your greatest natural resources for succeeding, but they will be your undoing if you can't handle them with lighthearted humor. Key number six. This one is for the ladies. Don't let your self-esteem go down under the stress of sexual harassment. Make use of the creepers. Publicly embarrass them, laugh at them. Your humor and strength in the face of adversity will help other women feel better about themselves. Key number seven, don't think you are too average for anyone to care about what you might be doing in your life or what you might have to say. There's always a demographic for everything you have ever or never thought of. Everything from teen girl gossip and cute cat videos to spiritual awakenings, quantum physics, and protecting yourself from bankers and Kabbalists. No matter what it is you have to share, it, <clears throat> it, is, it is of more value than you realize. Do not underestimate yourself or you will fail. Know that your expressions are no less important than anyone else's. Key number eight, be a sovereign leader, not a follower. 
To do this, simply stop putting other people above you on a pedestal while simultaneously shooting yourself down. Just because you have a high opinion of their videos and a low opinion of yourself does not mean that they are better than you. It only means that you are being unfair to yourself. Key number nine. The knowledge and tools for making the most of all this will take time to find and time to learn. Again, make this a fun adventure. It does not require you to be a super genius or have decades of experience in some career field to locate tools and become good at using them. Most of them are very simple that a child could figure them out. Do not underestimate your abilities or you will fail. Key number 10. You are the master of your tools, not the other way around. Use other people's methods and practices as things which inspire you to creating your own. Their way is not your way. Their way can only inspire you to figure out your way. You are a human being, not a robot. If you try to conform to someone else's methods, you will fail. And the last key, key number 11, make YouTube an integrated part of your life. Just like your shoes, or a hat, or your car, or a bicycle, or any other tool that you use regularly. Don't make your life all about the tool. You will waste more time and get less done and drive yourself to depression if you do not see YouTube as just yet another tool in your life. Don't make YouTube a big deal. It's not. Just have fun and make videos as you go. It's not a corporate deadline. It's not a homework assignment. It's not a cram for final exams. Don't make yourself neurotic or dun da da dun, you will fail. <laughs> Dave, I wonder who inspired you to some of these. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm uh, I'm really like not in, entirely <clears throat> sure as to. Uh, who exactly inspired me to that? I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I think I, I think I remember their initials though. I don't play. I don't remember their name, but their initials are Katarina Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like it looks like Kristen like dropped off again here. Let's try to find out. Hun. Um, rejoin again. She said it did it again. Rejoin again. She was when, gone the whole time. When it happens, just rejoin. <clears throat> Looks like your phone is just being difficult. Rejoin when it nails you off. You don't need to ask permission before rejoining. Mm -hmm. I mean, seeing as she's already invited to this thing, I mean. <laughs> anyway, any questions, comments, or uh, no. anything at this point so far? No. I'm good. Uh, no. Alrighty. Okay. Now, for people who might not yet be ready to create their own videos and maybe also might not even yet be ready to learn how to use programs such as video download helper and other things to where you can download and re-upload videos and hey let's say somebody's got crappy Costa Rican bandwidth so maybe <laughs> down downloading and uploading might not be the most convenient well, um, any video that's marked as Creative Commons is going to have a remix button. This is one of the nicer, more awesome of the new features that um, YouTube has bestowed upon us. And I will provide example. Let's see, we are screen sharing here. Yes, we are. Okay. I'm just going to use this as an example right quick. Okay. 
Okay. Now, okay, my sound just cut out for some reason, or somebody's sound dropped off. Oh, oh, and here's Jay. Jay. Oh, now everything's back. Hey. Hi, hey. Jay. Hi. Kristen, <laughs> Kristen was just here. She was having technical difficulties. But, um, anyways, back to... Um, what I was saying here, I'm trying to get back to this. Um, okay, so we see the title on this video that I'm using as an example here. You know, Wesley dies and Picard gets some funny little video, and you see paradigm shift, like, dislike, about, share, add to. Notice a nice little remix button right here. It says open open this video in the YouTube video editor. Now this is easy. Um, you're going to want to highlight the title and um, copy the title. And let's say we were going to, you know, remix this. Um, obviously, it's my own video, but... Okay. See where it says my edited video? Whoa! Someone sound... What the hell? Hold on a second here. This is like playing and it shouldn't be. Okay, that needs to stop. Okay, that was really weird. Were you able to hear all that or is that only blasting like in my headphones? It was only for you. Okay. Anyway, see where it says um, my edited video? Well, you can highlight that. Really? And then yeah, and then replace it with the title. Do you all see that? I see. Yeah. And now when you hit publish, what that'll do is it'll make a copy of that video and it'll upload it to your own YouTube channel using that as the title. And then, you know, to put in the description, obviously you can copy and paste the description from the original, but you're going to have to wait until the video is actually in your video manager so that you can hit the um, edit button and uh, paste that in there. And um, Kristen is messaging me again here. Um, let's see here. She said it will just do it again. Well, just keep trying anyways. It's all good. And I think we're seeing some examples of how state of being affects technology as well, as all of us have experienced a lot more than once, or at the very least most of us have, to where when we're aligned with certain states of being and core belief systems where we're insisting that our technology just you know can't cooperate with us you know, the universe isn't going to sit us down for an intervention and try to change our minds and be like, all right, you want technology to fuck up? Cool, here you go. <laughs> That's happened to me so many times. Me too. So any anybody have any questions about the lovely little remix button? Nope. <laughs> Oh, and another one of YouTube's really, really cool um, new features is um, some things when they get third-party matched, um, some of the content authors, they call it a cover, but, it, but it's really in regard to just um, derivative works. I don't know if this thing will just go in here right quick. I'm clicking copyright notices. You'll see why in a second once it um, loads into there. And welcome back, Kristen. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hey. <laughs> okay. So are we all able to see the screen here with copyright notices? Yes. Okay. Notice how some of these are monetized, like PSEC 2013, Jay Larson and Time Warrior Blame Game Dynamics. And you see a green dollar sign there. It's monetized. 
Well, that is because some what some of these copyright holders are getting smart and doing now is it says here monetize my video. This uh, this is my cover of a song written by somebody else. Um, they just put it to that explanation to keep it simple, kind of like a dummy's explanation. What they're really meaning is that portions of their content were detected in yours, so a derivative work, generally speaking, has been detected. So some of their shit is detected in your shit, and they're nice enough to do profit sharing with you. Instead of like DMCA attacking you and trying to like take you down, and instead of being like, okay, we're going to third party match, but screw you, we're not going to share any of the money with you. Um, some people have, whose audio background is like really loud right now? Somebody's background audio is being like incredibly overbearing. Not mine. Uh, Am I able to be heard okay? Yeah. Uh, it sounds like circus music. Yeah. Uh, does someone else see that thing that people see all putting it up? What, Kristen? Someone can hear you. Um, I can barely hear you because some, somebody's got some loud background noise. I think it's gone now. Yeah, it seems to be. Okay, well that was very bizarre. Yeah, that was. That was, that was rather weird. Uh. But anyway, um, so instead of a, some of these copyright holders... DMCA attacking your ass or being like, screw you, we're going to third party match you, but you don't get to make any money. Um, what a lot of them are doing is allowing you to, to monetize their stuff as a derivative work, so there's profit sharing. Um, it calls it a cover. Does, because okay, does it... What, Kristen? Oh, no. Oh, she bombed out again. It's because this, she's using a smartphone. Phones usually screw up like that. Mine does the same thing. Really? Yeah, that's what smartphones do. They're not so smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whenever I use Google Hangouts on my phone, I don't ever really get bumped off. This is my first time on a Google Hangout, actually. <laughs> so I never use my phone for this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, um, anyway, um, as I was trying to say, um, even though it calls it a cover, it's kind of just, you know, like dummy speak. They don't want to confuse people with big, long explanations. What they're really trying to say is it's a derivative work, just that some of their shit was detected in, in some of your shit. And instead of being assholes about it, they are, you know, deciding to share some of their money with you instead of just being like, no, screw you. So as you can see as I'm scrolling through and you can see all the different third-party matches, um, you can also see that some of them are monetized. And so when you have stuff that does third-party match, um, it's nice to check the copyright section every now and again and scroll through because you know these third party matches over time seem to start opening up as more copyright holders um, start to get increasingly more open minded and go hey maybe if we profit share then our videos will spread more and we'll make even more money because people will want to share them around and then you know they'll be generating even more money for us so they're kind of starting to wake up and smell the coffee to this so uh, I've noticed like before there was like none of my third party matches had this option and then just like one by one just like more started opening up boom 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 and it keeps increasing as you know they become more open-minded about it so the copyright section is you know a really good um, section to check every once in a while. You can see it's on the little left hand bar there, copyright notices. So that is, you know, a really good um, section to check. Um, as far as downloading and re-uploading videos, 
Um, uh, there's a number of different programs you can use. Um, one is Video Download Helper. That's like the most common. Um, it's for Internet Explorer and Firefox. Um, and that'll just allow you to download it in an MP4 format and re-upload it. So like, you know, like for example, anybody is more than welcome to download and, and re-upload, you know, any Paradigm Shift episodes, things like that. You know, I don't care. I'm not going to go DMCA attacking anybody. Just, you know, have at it. What's mine is yours, case or So, you know, that's all good. And so these are, these are definitely, like, ways to kind of get used to using the YouTube system, especially if, like, you know, you know, you're, like, a beginning step for someone's, you know, confidence or self-esteem is in the shitter, and they're like, oh, man, you know, I don't, I don't know how to use a video editor, I don't know how to make videos, I don't know how to do this, I don't know, it's a big excuse eliminator, because at least they can do something, you know, and they can kind of start into it and, you know, get used to things a little bit. So, you know, it doesn't take rocket science to do this. Because, like, one of, the, one of the big reasons that people really fail on YouTube is because they are just incredibly impatient. Um, their focus is on making money now. Because usually people aren't joining this and doing this for fun. They're doing it out of desperation. You know, it's a bad economy. Their home life sucks. They need money. They're, you know, they're in this depressed state. They can't find a job. And, you know, they're, they're looking for, you know, ways to make quick cash. And so when you put money as the priority, then you're automatically just going to keep stressing yourself and stressing yourself and stressing yourself. It's going to feel like no matter how much you do, you're just not making enough fast enough. And it's, you know, all the, the techniques that you could ever learn that work fine take a certain period of time. I kind of compare it to raising water hyacinth. Um, for all of you who know what, what water hyacinth is at the pond plant, it multiplies exponentially. But if you're only starting out with like two, two becomes four, and then four becomes eight, and so on. At first, it's a rather slow process. It can take months for it to hit critical mass, but then once it does, it's like, boom, you've got more of the stuff than you even know what to do with. But people just, you know, they get like really impatient. So YouTube is kind of a lot like raising water hyacinth in that way. You just got to be patient and let things take their course. And when you start making money, the amount you make every month is going to differ. That's, that's, an, that's another thing people tend to fail out on too. Because like, let's say they make 200, but then all of a sudden the next month that they make like 75. They're like, oh man, what the fuck? This isn't working. You know. And they're not realizing that, you know, things just kind of, they go up and down. And as time goes on, you know, the, the, the range of money you make, the bottom end of it starts to go up and the top end of it starts to go up. Like, you know, I started out to where, you know, it took a few months just to make $100. And then for a while I was, like, making between, like, you know, 100 and 200, and then, like, between, like, 150 and 350, and, like, now, you know, my my broad range is, you know, between, like, you know, 2,000, or excuse me, 200 and 1,000, and that range will continue to, to move up the scale over time, but each month you could make any amount of money in between, you know, whatever your current range is, so, you know, don't get disheartened if, like, you know, one month it's like, wow, cool, I made 500 bucks, and then, like, the next month it's like, well, what the fuck, I only made 150, this shit isn't working. You know, because people really just get down on themselves about it, you know, and that's why success comes from happiness and not the other way around. The whole idea is to have fun doing this you know, deal with content you enjoy dealing with and and be playful about it and just really enjoy doing it.
I mean, all all the stuff that I do on YouTube, I I enjoy doing it. You know, I wouldn't be doing any of this if I hated it. You know what I mean? Anybody have any questions, comments, anything? Rui's got like their mics muted. <laughs> Okay, my mic isn't muted. I could, like, talk now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and anything to say? Just, wow, like, interesting what you, like, that she had to, like, go a few months just to make a couple hundred dollars or something. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. I mean, everybody starts out, you know, at the beginning, basically. Mm -hmm. I, I tend to use an analogy about, um, you know, you can't plant a tree seed today and expect a 40-foot tree tomorrow. Yeah. But a lot of people are that unrealistically impatient when it comes to, you know, success in their life. Katerina, I think you could probably add some really good points about you know, ways people drive themselves in your rod, trying to follow protocols and procedures and being like, what the fuck, you know, I'm doing all this stuff, but it's not working, and blah, 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 you know. You were driving yourself crazy there for a while, so why don't you kind of kind of share the perils of that with us? I'm getting a lot of feedback from somebody's end. I yeah, mean, somebody's I think it's got like good. a real I think they need to do this more. Yeah, now it's gone. Yep. Called it. That was weird. Yeah, there's a lot of noise, man. Yeah. I think he's listening to music or something. But know. um I think Dave's too boring for him. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And ugly. And ugly. He's too ugly. And <laughs> ugly and well, boring. Well, 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 either either I'm either I'm too boring or you're not showing enough cleavage. I'm not sure which. <laughs> <laughs> With, uh, I'm I'm forcing her to wear turtlenecks for the rest of her life. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I have to talk to you from behind my burka. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm going to get detained. That's right. We've, we've, <laughs> We've instituted a, a system of corporal punishment here, and it's, you know, in order to keep her in line. It's very important. Yeah, he's going to change your religion. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. So, yeah, what Dave's talking about is, like, for a while, I kind of was trying to commit to doing, like, a video a day. And, you know, it, it really did a lot to... Um, get me kind of more in the flow of making videos, but I wasn't doing it in a fun, like, ease and flow kind of way. I wasn't really doing it when I was inspired. It was almost like trying to, like, squeeze every single drop out of me in order to make it happen. It felt like I was pulling teeth, and it was really not fun. Um, and so, therefore, I kind of just stopped making videos for a while because I just really was tired of doing that. And, like, I, I was feeling more like... I had to kind of whip myself to do it every day. And thus Dave kind of would, you know, be like, well, Katarina, you know, just chill out. Have some fun with it. And I was like, fuck you, Dave. I, I don't, I'm not having fun with it. I, I don't think this is fun at all. And how, this is hard. And this is complicated. And, blah, blah, blah. and I just it kind of went into a bit of a rut with that. And so thus, you know, I moved to Costa Rica for a while and, you know, it was a really good excuse for me to not be able to have the internet and not be doing videos because I was like, oh, go speak in there. It's too slow. I just can't do it, Dave. So, you know, I'm slowly getting out of that again now because Paul is all interested in making YouTube videos. So I like YouTube yeah. videos. I like the platform. I know. It's, and besides, it's, I'm ridiculously cool. good looking, so. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> yeah, pa, pa, you know, Paul's like my new partner in crime as far as motivating Katarina and eliminating her excuses. Right, that's my goal. My, yeah, I would, I would, I would, I, I would say that I would say we've been inspiring, uh, um, uh, conspiring against you, but it's not against you; it's in your favor. More like conspiring against your againstness against yourself and trying to get you out of well, your you own way. <laughs> I actually I made a YouTube video just 
the other day and I uploaded it after like I not doing it. one for like a month. I saw And it. now I have like a whole bunch of people. I think I have like four coaching calls that I've set, scheduled for this week and you know, I did one today and they paid me forty dollars for an hour. And so now I'm gaining that and testimonial videos from them. So I'm actually going to be starting to put more content out on the internet about, you know, my services and the things that I'm offering. The stuff that really brings me joy, which is, you know, coaching people and, and working with them through their creativity blocks and the things that are stopping them. You know, and that's the stuff that I can really get behind and I can do. I think the biggest problem is that I wasn't really passionate about how I was approaching it before, but I think being able to step back and reform my ways is really serving me well because I can see the outpouring of abundance from that, from me having that mental shift. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, you kind of drove yourself nuts with Empower Network too. And it's like, what I notice is that the people succeeding, really succeeding in Empower Network, have made Empower Network like a, just a side thing, if not a completely like background thing. And that's right. why they're see, succeeding in Empower Network, because they're not making it about Empower Network. And the people exactly. that are trying to... The people that are trying to make it about Empower Network are like driving themselves completely neurotic, making it about like, Empower that was Network. Real Ashley. Like, uh. Yeah, Ashley. Yeah. She's cool, but she she drives herself crazy about it. I mean, we both told her, you know, have have fun with it. Have fun with yeah. it, and and it'll be you know easier. But I mean, you right. know, value value in all experience. Totally. I mean, you know, it ev me eventually, it taught me a lot of what I don't want to do, and you know, now I feel like I have a much more grounded relationship with all of these things. And I mean, I still have a little bit of resistance towards some things, like you know, Dave wants to get me on a Google Hangout about YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you know what? It's like, and also. Like, you know, I know you haven't really been paying much attention to Empower, but I'm sure you're still making money from it. Not as much as you were before, but it's still a, a passive income that's coming in. Even if it's yeah. only a fraction of what it was, it's still doing that on its own. And, and that's the point. That's how it's kind of supposed to be treated. It's supposed to be like a side thing. And as you expand into whatever it is you're doing and just have Empower Network as an aspect of it, not the focus of it, then you start making right. more money with Empower. Mm -hmm. that, that's why Empower's main, main thing is a blogging interface. Because Empower Network is saying, this is supposed to be about you and whatever it is you are doing. It's not supposed to be about Empower Network. Right. And a lot of people forget that, and thus they try to become ML, ME, like, skeezy fucks. And I don't really resonate with those people anymore. Yeah, well, they were a good learning experience for you for a while. Yeah. Anyways. And I, and I so gotta they, admit, some of those people do, do succeed. Not all of them drive themselves neurotic. So some of no. them, it, it, some some of them enjoy being MLME fuckers, and so they're aligned with their joy, and so they succeed at. It. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But Dave, hey, look, I'm look, I was gonna say, look at a mirror. Paul knows a mirror, like front personally. What do you have to say about that? Um, he is very money focused. Yeah. But he enjoys yeah. what he does, and so... He does enjoy what he does, I and mean, he really gets into it, and hey, more yeah. power to him. And just, I had the opportunity to work with him, and I declined because I didn't want to deal with that. I didn't want to deal with the whole MLM aspect of things. Yeah. I just I liked the fact that, you know, the first thing he did was try to sell me a blog. It's like, well, why don't you tell me what the blog does, and then try and sell <laughs> it to me. Why don't you tell me what it can do for me, instead of being like, no, you need a blog, and it's only $25 a month. I'm thinking $25, that feeds me for a week. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, my, 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 my point is, is that even though he's all mlm -y, he's succeeding because that's his passion. He enjoys that, so he's aligned with his success with that. 
someone who doesn't enjoy that is not going to succeed no matter how much they might learn from a mirror and no matter how good he might teach somebody if it's not in that person's joy they're just gonna bomb out and that's that's my point with YouTube too you know you, it's gotta be something you enjoy and YouTube is a tool. It could be about anything. I mean, I got Pondscape for my fish and pond videos. I got the Paradigm Shift stuff, then Switch, all, you know, all sorts of different things. And it's because I enjoy it. I'm not, like, putting YouTube on a pedestal like, oh, YouTube is the focus of everything. No, it's just, it, it's, it's a tool. It's there when I need it while I'm doing everything else that it is that I'm doing. And that's the point. Right. YouTube isn't supposed to be a focus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another common fail that I've that I've also noticed um, that people have with YouTube is, like, even if they have like really, really, really good videos, um, they don't really do anything to take advantage of it with social media and spread it around, like. You know, people have those applications to where it'll automatically post to Facebook or whatever, but it only does it once. You got to kind of keep um, recycling your, you know, your videos through. I do that on Paradigm Shift, and that'll build up your views more and more. But you got to have fun with it and be playful with it. And I also use a lot of automation. Like, have you heard of Twitter feed? Mm, not really. Okay, well, what Twitter feed does is it allows you to post um, other different social networking stuff through into Twitter and RSS and, and all that other kind of stuff. So all the articles that come through on uh, Paradigm Shift on Facebook, they automatically post to Twitter. I also have them automatically posting to Tumblr. So I don't have to do any extra work with it. It automatically goes to these other sources. And it's amazing how many views and, and stuff I'm starting to get on Twitter and on Tumblr. And I haven't put, like, hardly any focus on it at all. It shit's just on autopilot. And I'm getting people coming in and, and getting at my videos and stuff that way. Cool. So that's actually pretty cool. But, you know, people also need to understand this, especially with Facebook. Like, if you keep reposting your videos, new people are going to see it that didn't see it before. And you got, like, you know, in your Facebook feed, there's not just friends, but friends of friends. So not only your friends, but their friends see it, too, yeah. when, you have, when you have it marked as public. Plus, if you have it marked as public, Google hooks into that. If you go to Facebook and you do not log into it at all, and you try going to Facebook pages, anything that's marked as public, you will still be able to see without even needing to log into it. So marking things like that as public is very important. And then Google picks it up and it brings people in that way. And it's a really easy system. But oftentimes people think that they can just upload a video and that's it. No social networking, no advertising it, no nothing. And they think that just because the video exists that, you know, it's just going to rain money just because they have a video existing. It, it doesn't, doesn't work that way. you got to put a little bit of effort into it. What's up? Hey, Dave. I said you got to get good at marketing it, too. Um, can you talk a little bit more about, like, what you do with your meta tags and stuff like that? Sure. Um, let me switch the screen. How much how much does your tagging factor into your success with YouTube? Pretty heavily. Um what I do because it's really, really annoying to tr and time wasting to try to think of individuated tags to describe each video. I use tags that basically relate to anything that my channel could possibly have. Now I do this in two sets. Can everybody see the screen? 
Yeah. Yeah. There you have the tag section. YouTube puts a limit on how much you can actually have in there. So in the main tag section, I have kind of related people and other YouTube channels and my, my other YouTube channels and someone's got a loud phone there um, and things like that. So like you can see related featured YouTube affiliations, friends, Katerina, Xander, Edward, Snowflake, Erilyn, Lavelle, Annalisha, Juliet, Hieronymus, Time, Warrior, Dave, Kelso, Kishar, Darvich, Don, Ursu, Adams, PSEC, Ponscape, Legal Music Search, BBSers, Express It, Type 1 Radio. So I have a basic set of keywords that kind of describe related con related content that belong to other people. Now, beyond that, what I do is in the actual description section, this is where I really bombard the shit out, out of the keywords to be more specific into a lot of topics because um, YouTube doesn't limit you so bad here. And putting, the, putting in the keyword tags listed in the description section like I have there does the exact same thing as the tag section below it, but the detail section gives you more room, room to work with. Um, so you see Paradigm Shift in Educational Comedy, <clears throat> NWO New World Order, Metaphysics, Quantum Physics, Unity, Consciousness, PSYOP, Psychology, Manipulation, Mainstream, News Lies, Cover Up, FDA, CFR, CDC, Masonic, Mechanic. You got all this different stuff that, that encompasses the different topics of um, my videos. Dave? Yes. Now, if you do like a keyword search for that kind of stuff, if it's in the description, is it still going to like pop up? Absolutely. Okay. Like, like, like I said, putting it in the description and the tags that you have in the tag section, most people don't realize that as far as the way the YouTube system functions, it's the same thing. It's just that the keyword, the description section, you can fit a lot more than in that limited tag section. But both sections do the same thing. Because yeah, it's when like you do tags versus five hundred, yeah. So I mean, they both do the same thing, even though they list it as two separate things. When you put in keyword searches into YouTube, it it associates everything with everything. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And not only is this important for, you know, people searching with keywords. It's very important for videos that come up in the related section. Because when people are watching your video, or watching anybody else's video for that matter, they always look to the related section while they're watching it like, hmm, after I'm done with this video, is there anything else that looks interesting on the side over here? Yeah, people there's a are always drawn to that. Yeah, exactly. I've so, done that myself, and that's how you end up at the weird part, the weird part of YouTube. Uh huh. <laughs> which is, which is the important part of YouTube. Exactly. Totally. So it do, it does the same thing. They have it as two different sections, but really it does the same thing. The only difference is one is limited and one is not so limited. Okay. I mean, granted, the des the description section does have a limit. I think it's like a thousand characters or something. But the tag section has a really anal limit. It's really, really small. And it doesn't even stop you. It's so annoying. You can put in all these tags and try to save it. And it's like, fuck you, too many tags. And it's like, well, how much is too many? By how much did I go over? So you have to keep, like, you eliminate a tag and you try to save it. Nope, still too much. Then you eliminate another one and try to save it. Nope, screw you, still too much. It doesn't tell you by how much you've gone over, and it doesn't tell you what you're allowed to fit in. It's like trial and error because YouTube wants to just annoy the shit out of you. <laughs> so in the, in the tag section, if you keep that purposely limited, and then you put all the rest of your tags at the bottom of the description section, 
you've got a lot more room to work with so you can have whatever description on the video you want um, you might notice also that um, first I have the description of the video then I have the paradigm shift you know social media credits in general um, I still have the bubble WS link in there because I'm too lazy to take it out currently I'll do that eventually but um I got YouTube, DeviantArt, Facebook, EN, Pinterest, Tumblr, Twitter. Um, you know, I got to add Weasel in there at some point. But I mean, I got all my social media links there, and then the keyword tags. Then above it is the actual video description. Like with this one, it says, "When ANSI dominated cyberspace and dial-up was <clears throat> was as fast as we could go, Z modem provided parodies like this. Number one, make it so." Because this is like a really, really, really old Star Trek parody. Like this was this was created in like the mid nineties when computer technology was archaic. For all I know, I have the only remaining copy on the internet for all the hell I know. I haven't been able to find it anywhere else for a damn long time. But it's really funny. But needless to say, I put my description of that video first. Then below it, I have, you know, my social media stuff. PSAC, a.k.a. Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy, can be found on the following social media sites. So, you know, that, that comes up when people are searching as well. As a matter of fact, one thing to note, the description is less important for people actually reading your description and more important for people finding you in the first place because it all goes into YouTube's little search database. Everything in there basically counts as a keyword. So, anybody else have any questions, comments, whatever at this point? No. Paul, Katarina, J, Desiree, anybody? No. no. That, that makes a lot of sense to me. I'm going to start loading up my descriptions with keywords. Yeah. But you got to make I sure they... I 100 uh, views, first milestone. Yeah. But let me be clear. I'm not suggesting random keywords that have nothing to do with anything. I'm talking about ones that do have to do. Oh, Mike Colbert is calling me. Let me take this right quick. Okay. Hey, Mike. No. Hey Mike. Hey, um, we're kind of on like the the little uh, YouTube webinar thingy right now. You want to come join us? All right. Okay, cool, no problem. Well, um, hopefully you could join us, but if not, then maybe next time. Alright, cool. And I mean, obviously, anything that you miss, you can, you know, pick up later because it's going to be saved as a YouTube video anyway. But yeah, hopefully uh, we'll see you here in a bit, but uh, if not, maybe next time. Alright, cool. Not a problem. Talk to you later. Yep, bye. That was Mike. He kind of... Um, has had a busy day and kind of took a nap and overslept a little bit. Now he's hungry and he's getting some food and uh, he's right, going to okay. try to make it make, make it after that. Okay. But anyway, um, no, as I, I was saying, Paul, he was on the I'm not, yeah, Paul, I'm not suggesting to you or anyone to just put in random keywords just for the fuck of it. That's actually kind of against YouTube's term, terms of service to do that. Make sure it's keywords that relate to your content. Right. But Make do they sure have to that, relate necessarily to that particular video? Or just to the, what, the type of content that I put out? 
Well, that's kind of a, a matter of opinion, and people's okay. opinions differ. But me personally, I do it as per just generally the stuff that relates to my channel. So, okay. like, you know, I'm not going to be putting in, you know, keywords about, um, you know, pink dresses and, you know, Barbie dolls and, um, you know, sewing and knitting or, you know, whatever. Because that's, yeah. that's, not, that's not what any of my stuff is about. So I'm not going to be putting keywords that have absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with my content. Now, in the related tags, in, in the short list, I put names of, you know, affiliates and other channels I run and stuff like that because that is a general relation and has something to do with it. But in the main description thing, I, I put keywords that, you know, are more directly associated with um, what I'm doing. Let me um, go back to the uh, list here again. Okay. So as we can see, like, you know, I got um, Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy, NWO, New World Order, Metaphysics, Quantum Physics, Unity, Consciousness, PSYOP, Psychology, Manipulation, Mainstream, News Lies, Cover-Up, FDA, CFR, CDC, Masonic, Satanic, Freedom, Slavery, <coughs> Human Farm, Vaccines, <coughs> Death War, Globalist Elites, Humor, Horror, YouTube Channel, Independent Media, Social Network, Spread the Word, Think for Yourself, Group think, followers, leaders, sheep, sheeple, awakening politics, big puppet presidents, 2012, 2013, 2016, anonymous chemtrails, geoengineering, weather warfare, Ron Paul, Obama, genocide, crimes, terrorism, predator drones, and the Fed, etc., etc. You know everything from the world stuff that's going on in the world stage. You know geopolitics, um, quantum physics, spirituality. Um, you know all these different types of. Uh, topics that, you know, you will find periodically through Paradigm Shift and Educational Comedy, I have these things listed as keywords because, you know, that's the general feel of the sort of stuff you'll find. Now, okay. every once in a while, someone nitpicks a bitch, like they'll, they'll come across, you know, one of my more silly videos and they'll be looking for a keyword that's something more serious, no comment like, oh, well, that was misleading, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, it wasn't. Because my keywords are to describe my channel in general, and there is nothing in the terms of service that says I can't have keywords that describe my channel in general. That makes sense. Yeah. And it's somebody doesn't like it, that's just their right to not like it. Oh well. Does anybody have any questions, comments, anything? Mm, no, I'm good. Nope, I'm good. Um, Paul, seeing as you said you already run Ubuntu, right? Uh, I, yeah, I run it on my MacBook Pro. I, I run it uh, two operating systems. Right now, I'm actually on uh, OS X, but I could turn it off and then boot up uh, Ubuntu. I, I also run it on uh, on my any anything that originally came installed with Windows. All right, um, because I'm running Ubuntu and the software that I use for video rendering is called Caden Live. Okay. It's a really awesome software, and it's really easy to use. And, um, you know, you could just go into, like, the Ubuntu Software Manager and, you know, type in Caden Live, and it's really okay. easy. Um, as a matter of fact, because, you know, we could do screen sharing and all that happy stuff, um, let me actually load up... Uh, Caden Live, so people can see that. Um, and for people who are running, you know, Windows and not Linux, and who, um, like, you don't have to be, like, perfectly tech savvy, but at least you know your way around a computer a little bit. Um, there's something called the Wubi installer, to where it'll actually okay. install Linux inside of Windows, because mm. what it'll do is it, it'll install it as a program. It'll be an image file, 
And when you boot up Windows, you know how like if you install more than one copy of Windows, it'll give like that little screen to where you can like select between all the different versions and shit? Yeah. Well, it'll say Ubuntu Linux in one of those selections. And if you were to actually edit the boot.ini file,